The Texas Chainsaw Massacre isn't just dying, it's being murdered, and in this video we're going to take a comprehensive look at why exactly that is. Now before I start talking about all of the main problem points like balance, design, monetization, foresight, and of course the community, I want to say up front that this video is intended to be unfiltered constructive criticism for the developers. I would not be making this video if I did not genuinely enjoy the game. Now you might already know that if you look at the Steam charts for TCM, you can see that death is coming for the game. And every time I use Steam charts for a reference, people will say, yeah, but that doesn't reflect the console and the Game Pass numbers in May. But I actually have data for you there as well. TCM was in the top four Game Pass games played back in August when it launched. And now as of January, it does not even make the top 40 list for what is essentially a free game. Again, for PlayStation, it was the 27th most played game back in September, and now it doesn't even make the top 100 list. So understand, this video isn't a YouTuber farming negativity for views. After I show you those numbers, if you still do not believe that TCM is on a crash course to be dead by the end of 2024, I am sorry, but you are just in denial. That said, before we talk directly about TCM, I first want to address how the devs communicate with the TCM community. For example, in the past, they have said things to their player base like, oh, if you don't like certain aspects about the game, go play another game, or just don't play our game, we don't want you. It's such a bad and unprofessional approach to managing the game, even if it does feel justified to say. Yet the devs need to understand that this attitude gives off the vibe of them not being concerned with the possibility of the game dying. They already basically said that if TCM doesn't start to do better by this August, they're already done with it. Which again, you have to understand, how does saying something like that inspire people to want to keep playing the game? Make content about the game or to keep making any purchases that are needed to keep the game going forward. All it does is make your community feel hopeless. I understand you're a very transparent company, but don't underestimate the effect you can have on your community by being too open or by not choosing your words more carefully. Now, I know a lot of you watching this will disagree with me on certain points in this video. That's fine, that's nothing new, and if any TCM devs do see this, understand this video is meant to be tough love, because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing, which is for TCM to succeed. Alright, to start, TCM is a video game that was supposed to bring the casual fun back to the asymmetrical horror genre. The devs went on record multiple times claiming that's what the game was meant for. Uh, is it a game about, look, I'm the best. This game is, I'm having fun with my friends, and what we don't lean into is the competitive side of it because it starts to breed a different type of player. It starts to create a different atmosphere that doesn't fit into what I think the game's supposed to be or even the IP itself. I heavily pushed for this myself when the game launched and got called a brown noser for it. However, on one hand, the devs say casual fun horror sim, but with the other hand, they slap you with every possible gameplay element found in the sweatiest, most competitive games ever made. A very strict leveling system punishing players for experimenting with different builds. That's because it takes players a lot of hours to level up their perks to level 3. If they want to try out new perks, they have to completely respect their character, losing access to their old perks unless they respect again, then spend another 8 to 10 hours grinding to get those new perks to level 3 just to see which build is better. Keep in mind these perks are usually worthless at level 1 and a lot of times even make you weaker, like Scout, which reduces your character's damage by 30% at level 1. I have literally never seen a leveling system that pushes meta harder than the one in TCM. It's like it was specifically designed to push meta. Also, there's attribute points that heavily affect the gameplay. The difference between a player with base attributes and maxed out attributes feels like a level 1 character in an MMO trying to PvP a level 50. There's no real skill to it, the higher level player just wins by default. Add to that a perk system that already dunks on new players, and you have an impossibly negative experience for new players, or even players just trying out other characters besides their main. On top of all of that, 
Character abilities can be upgraded as well, allowing three skill upgrades, giving even greater disadvantages to new or underleveled players. In addition, there are perks that are just mind-blowingly overpowered, like No Cell, a victim perk that reduces their damage taken by 80% for three hits. That's crazy. 80%? How do you even come to a number like that? So you might think, well, how does something like that even make it into something like TCM? Well, I'll explain why in a minute. But the point is, is that the entire metagame gives players monumental advantages against players who are not maxed out or running the best builds themselves. Also, to be clear in this video, when I reference the metagame, which I'll do often, I don't just mean the best perks, builds, or abilities. I mean the entire metagame. Everything that isn't vanilla level 1. And I'm doing that because the devs refer to the leveling system as a metagame. Now, if the devs truly want a game that plays more casually, then everything in this metagame, all of the perks, skills, and attributes, need to be toned down dramatically. If you watched my channel before, you'll know I wanted this game to succeed as a party game, but it's finally time to accept that this is not a party game and most likely never will be. So let's talk about why exactly that is. Now, whether you play family or victim or both, you probably have your own ideas on what is balanced and what isn't. But the unfortunate truth is that this game has a major design misstep that will make it feel unbalanced forever. And that's not because it's asymmetrical. It's because the 3v4 formula specifically does not work in a casual horror setting. And in order to try to make it work, the developers are either forced or unintentionally making terrible design and balance choices. Now, I understand this is a bit of a hot take, so initially you might be hesitant about it. So let me explain further. The family is meant to be the power role. It's a horror game. They are meant to be intimidating and scary. However, in a video game setting, having three strong killers looking for four victims is going to be a massacre every single match, which is going to make the victim players feel overwhelmed and very frustrated. The match would be over in two minutes every time. That's not fun. So in order for the game to function, the devs have to make the victims way stronger than they should be so they don't die so easily, which in turn robs the family players of truly being the power role and turns them more into a glorified AI role that's more similar to a co-op game rather than something you would see in a PvP game. For contrast, in Friday the 13th, there were seven victims and one killer. This formula allowed Jason to be the power role. The game played like a movie where more and more victims would get picked off and usually only one or two would slip through the cracks allowing both sides to have a fun experience. It was even fun dying as victim and watching your teammates afterwards. But in TCM, dying is often very frustrating because in order to die, you either got triple teamed by the family, one shot by Leatherface, something the devs are probably going to remove soon because it's too strong in a 3v4 scenario, uh, according to the devs, it's already been unintentionally nerfed, but it doesn't seem like they're in any hurry to fix it, which makes me assume that it's probably going to be removed. Speaking of which, the devs also just announced that victims will no longer instantly die if they get 2v1'd in a grapple, because again, that's too strong of a mechanic for a 3v4 game. Further evidenced by the fact that the second family member will now only inflict chip damage to the victim and not even full damage. If you are not familiar with what that means, it's a term used in fighting games where a player will still take a very small amount of damage while they're blocking. And you'll see this is going to be a reoccurring theme for TCM's entire life cycle in order to force 3v4 casual play. But back to the point, maybe as victim, you got killed by a metaed out high level family player when you're a low level victim. Maybe your team was low level and they got wiped out early or you bled out from a stalemate. It's always going to feel like there was some kind of cheese involved in the way you died because the devs are forced to make victims strong enough for 3v4. So if you're a good victim player, you'll very rarely die in a conventional way which means your deaths are going to feel unfair. This leads to another huge issue, which is player entitlement. Because family is so restricted, every member has to play their role perfectly or the entire team will get run over. Yet as a victim player, you are not restricted in this way. You only need your teammates to not die instantly. Even things like grouping up in twos is further being de-incentivized because now victims don't even have to save their teammates from grapple situations anymore. 
So because of this imbalance between good players, it's unfortunately going to create an entitlement that only gets worse over time. Meaning if the devs wake up and realize there's no realistic avenue to pursue the idea of TCM ever truly being a casual game, and instead balance the game as a competitive 3v4, entitled victim players like this guy, yes, yes. Would start crying, but at the same time, you would see more players take interest in TCM again. Also, just to be clear, I am not advocating for TCM to be more competitive. I play games like this for fun. I'm just being realistic. I'll say what I would do myself at the end of the video. Another issue with Victim is that escaping is rarely truly satisfying either because it's often way too easy when it does happen. Often victims won't even see a family member the entire match unless they camp the exit gate to teabag. You rarely get those Friday the 13th intense escape moments where you get out by a thread. This again forces family players to adopt a defensive AI-like strategy to protect objectives because straight offense will never work against good players. I don't want to keep repeating that point though, I'm talking about good players, obviously bad players are bad at the game, eventually they'll be good players as well. But it seriously reminds me of the old Splinter Cell and Metal Gear games where you were just watching a guard go back and forth between the same two spots. like. That's what it feels like to play family, and that's a big reason why people don't want to play family. It's not fun to feel like you're doing the job of an AI. Family players want to feel intimidating. This is a big reason why so many family players got burnt out on the game and quit. So again, the 3v4 formula is curating an unsatisfying experience for both sides. The game would play much better if there were more victims. Even if it was just one additional victim, there would be a big difference in 3v5. It would make for a much more action-oriented, intense game with stronger killers and more vulnerable victims. It would open the door for a lot of fun design elements too, like proximity chat, which was one of the best features in Friday the 13th. I should totally go find the other Yeah, they're in the locked door. Yeah, go do that. Oh, you are such a sellout. I love you. <laughs> she told me that one of her friends are in here. You said they're somewhere. Out the back. They're gone. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> With 3v4, the gameplay just becomes way too tight, which makes it too competitive. And there's almost no way to balance that out of the game without ruining the experience for one side or the other. It's fundamentally flawed at a foundational level for a casual game. Now I know a lot of you watching are going to inherently disagree with my argument against 3v4. You're optimistic about the game, you've had fun matches before, maybe a lot of them, I have too. The 3v4 can work if it's just balanced right. I get the skepticism, but it's just never going to be possible if the game is meant to be casual. And over time, as the devs continue to attempt to balance the game, you will see that it will never work. Again, to even have a chance, they would have to remove the entire metagame. No more perks, no more attributes, heavily rebalanced maps, completely gutted abilities. It's just never realistically going to happen because it's too much of a sunken cost. So whether they like it or not, the reality is, is that developers are now responsible for balancing a competitive 3v4 game but they are still in the mindset that their game is just meant for chill vibes and casual fun, and it's this disconnect that makes people not want to play the game. For example, just look at character powers. A lot of them are completely game-breaking, but the devs want to make strong powers because the game is meant to be played for fun. But when good players get their hands on these powers, the game just completely implodes and leaves the other side bored, frustrated, and annoyed. In short, 3v4 forces the devs to make victims stronger than they should be, which ruins any chance they can balance the game for their original vision of a casual fun horror game. Moving on, we have the issues with never being able to find a match, which in large part is a reflection of some of the issues I just talked about. Players are trying to avoid problems in the game before they have a chance to happen. 
but I already made an entire video on the Texas Lobby Simulator situation that you can find here. Since that video was released, the devs did implement some of the smaller changes I suggested. Unfortunately, it seems like they have no plans to incorporate the most important changes I discussed, and they also implemented other things that I was against. But yeah, if you're interested in a comprehensive video discussing the lobby simulator situation and how to fix it, I'll put another link to it at the end of this video. All right, moving on to the elephant in the room, monetization practices. A lot of people have criticized the devs for their price points with DLC. Now, I agree that their cosmetic DLCs are about 20% more expensive than they should be, especially for a paid game. PCM is $40, which is a fair price for the content available in the game. It has a very replayable gameplay loop. However, it does feel a bit like TCM is being treated as a free-to-play game, because of Xbox Game Pass, but that's obviously really unfair for all of the Steam and PlayStation players who have paid full price for the game. Now, personally, I don't care about their cosmetic price points. They are pretty close to industry standard and it can be annoying, but ultimately it doesn't affect the gameplay. On a side note, let's talk about the devs recent announcement of two new free skins and even the possibility of adding an in-game currency as well. This is great news. Balance aside, these types of additions alone can keep TCM going for a long time. So I really hope the devs do not underestimate the value this brings to the long-term survivability of the game. That said, there is something else from the recent Q&A that is concerning. The devs threw some shade at Dead by Daylight, their main competitor, in the way of basically saying that behavior just throws out new low effort copy and paste characters and cosmetics without any regard for logic or lore and at gun, they don't believe in doing that. When we design these characters, we don't aim to, we're not looking to give you Leland with a different, you know, slightly different frame haircut and clothes. Yeah. We're trying to make sure that we move gameplay in new places, right? Trying to make sure that we're we're shifting things, we're we're shaking things up, and we're moving gameplay into new areas. Um, you know, not reinventing the wheel here, but making sure that we bring value with these different characters. Yeah, they need to feel unique. Right. <clears throat> they look unique. Their background is unique. And when you play with them, it should feel unique. It shouldn't just feel like, oh, this is a carbon copy version of another character I've already played. Right. Uh, for what it is worth, and I know that a lot of you. It's worth something. Um, we're trying to make sure that the characters that we bring to the game are creative, new, interesting, unique. They're varied. They, um, you know, unlock some new type of way to play uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I think that that's um, um, uh, kind of a, a righteous endeavor. I think that's a good thing to be trying to do. Um, it would be a far simpler for us to say, Let's dress Leland up as a, a young scruffy guy who likes rock music and kick him out there with some new perks. Yeah. They want to do thorough research into everything about their characters, what this character eats, what this character wears, what music do they listen to, etc. And I get it. That's cool that they care so deeply. But if I was speaking directly to the devs, I would say you guys are overdoing it. You would not hurt the game by giving Leland a scruffy rock band outfit. There is a line and as developers, you are entitled to maintaining your vision for the game, but like 99% of the player base just plays characters because they like how they look or because they enjoy their abilities. I doubt there's ever been a player out there that mains a character because they have the same Spotify playlist. I, I, I mean, it's also why it takes so long to make these characters. I mean, we could, we could very well just insert uh, this you know character with a name and then all we have to worry about is like just make sure that there's more perks thrown into the tree and then let that be universally used by whomever or whatever like you can concentrate on that and you could pump things out a lot faster but it's not who we are as a company it's not the type of things we want to make we want to make things that we spend the time to learn everything we can about well really who is this this character what is their backstory what clothing do they wear what music do they listen to we have conversations here about that like making playlists for what, you know, a Leland or a Connie would listen to from that era. Like, we we actually do that. We actually do that. And it also then bleeds into, well, he's this kind of person, so then how would he or she react in a situation? And in that, you start to glean from that, like, potential abilities and then leaning into what the perks do to support that. That all takes time, and it's, and it's I think, why when our characters do come out, like they do genuinely feel unique. And I think that is one of the things that helps push asymmetric 
horror forward instead of just sort of moving sideways constantly. And, and, and what feels like each character, like the last thing I want to do is just put something out that just feels just mayonnaise. Like it's, oh, it's the same thing. It's just the reskinned this character. Um, and, and then you're only concentrating on like a perk tree or something. Do not forget the advertisements you guys did for TCM or the cosmetics you released for Friday the 13th. Now, I'm not asking you to put Leatherface in a banana hammock, even though we all know how well it would sell. I'm only saying there's a line and it feels like you need to pull back a little bit. Remember that games are supposed to be made for fun. Is the thing I want you to like take away from this is like the game's supposed to be fun. The game's not supposed to be competitive. Right? Like, that's not the point of the game. I also asked the resident expert on all things horror lore, Pixelbush, about his thoughts on the matter. And he said, The only thing I can give them credit for is saying that victim specific powers allow for more expression of their characters through gameplay. Shame that both the gameplay and the character they're trying to express are both aggressively mediocre at least in my opinion. Due to its broader scope in terms of types of characters you can have, DBD can tell stories that are bigger, more complex, and ultimately more meaningful than TCM has demonstrated their ability to do. It doesn't even come close. So at the end of the day, everyone can decide for themselves, but if the expert on this says it doesn't even come close, that is something to consider. I'll also leave a link to Pixelbush's channel in the description if you're interested. Now the point is, is that Gun uses this design process to help justify their price points for new characters being $10 each, $20 together, which is half the price of the full game, and that's just not okay. Especially considering how powerful the new characters are in comparison to the recently nerfed original characters. It borders on pay to win. There's no in-game way to unlock these characters at the moment, and it's double the price point that TCM's main competitor charges for a single new licensed character. Take for instance Chucky, who is fully voice acted by the original actor Brad Dorif with unique gameplay and an entirely new perspective. Spotify playlists or not, that's a lot of value for just $5. So to say that their DLC is worth double the price for an original character they created is a stretch. Their price points are just too high here. They're doing themselves no favors because it deters people from wanting to buy the new characters, especially when they don't even have a guarantee they'll be able to play the character they just bought because someone else in the lobby might have them locked in already. It would be better if they cost half the price and sold twice as much. Right now, it just comes off as greedy so for the next dlc character just don't make the spotify playlist and then pass those savings on to the community what makes all this feel even a little bit worse is they kind of knew that the new characters would be too strong they openly admitted that they somewhat did it on purpose to try to make the game feel fresh and push gameplay in different directions but again this goes back to the devs needing to own the fact that their 3v4 formula will never work in a casual game setting and they need to start either looking at balance from a competitive point of view or overhaul the entire game. Another thing I want to talk about is foresight. A lot of TCM's issues were easily identifiable during my first play session back during the technical test in May, a few months before the game released. In fact, I wrote the devs a big juicy letter with all of the constructive criticism I had at the time. I won't bore you with the entire letter, even though I ended up being spun on with pretty much everything I was concerned about, but let me just show you one part about cheating. I wrote, with the announcement about crossplay, a lot of fans are concerned about playing with PC cheaters, and every time your team replied saying things like, crossplay can be disabled. If you don't like it, disable crossplay, which is a real thing. They actually responded that way to people on Twitter after the technical test. All right, continuing the letter, I wrote, the first problem here is that there will never be enough players with crossplay disabled for that to be an actual viable option. The second problem is that you as developers should at least express that cheating is a problem and you have plans in place to combat it. You can remain as vague as needed and the reason I say they can be as vague as they want is because developers cream their pants every time people ask for details about cheating because they get to play their favorite card in the world, which is we don't want to help cheaters by telling them what we're doing, which is why I always say you can be as vague as you want. We just want you to say that you're doing something, but developers never do that. They always cream their pants and play the we don't want to help cheaters card. All right, back to the letter. <clears throat> you can remain as vague as needed, but the literal tech test already had cheaters in it. 
So it's obviously going to be a real problem very soon after launch. So that's what I wrote about cheating in the letter. Now, of course, they dismissed these warnings from me and everyone else, but what happened almost immediately after the game launched? Cheaters started to completely ruin the game. And like I said, disabling crossplay is not a viable option because not enough players will ever manually disable crossplay for there to be a functional player count. For example, if I went on Dead by Daylight on Xbox and disabled crossplay right now, I would never find a match because normal everyday players never do things like that. And even if they tried, they would see that they can never find a match, so they would just switch crossplay back on. So at launch, the TCM devs were forced to disable crossplay entirely for everyone until they got some better anti-cheat in place, which massively hurt the health of their game at launch. A lot of players quit and just never came back, but they had to do it because Game Pass players are their golden goose. If Game Pass players stop playing TCM, it dies. The devs know that and they've admitted it as well. It's not a secret or anything, but the point is that if they wouldn't have been so stubborn and frankly arrogant back in May when people like myself were trying to warn them that this was going to happen, they would not have lost so many players right after launch. This is an ongoing issue as well. The devs' relationship with the community is pretty atrocious. Gun is constantly farming in internet karma off of troll bait comments instead of focusing their energy more on genuine feedback and legitimate questions. Take it from a content creator. You will always have people being mean to you on the internet. It's just a fact. The only rational response and professional response is to ignore the trolls. Just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about, here's an example from Matt, TCM's brand lead, a cool guy, don't get me wrong, but when he was messaged by a random Reddit user who said, Matt blocked me after I clocked Locked his ass. All right, let's calm down. You didn't clock anybody. This is a comment on Reddit, so let's just chill a little bit. He says, Developers who refuse to accept criticism from a game they don't play, not true, and get mad when their own players give them criticism is equivalent of running around without a head, or in Matt's case, a dick. It's sad knowing the game got this far and know their own brand lead is destroying the game by causing unneeded controversy. So I basically disagree with almost everything in that comment. But uh, now for whatever reason, Matt's comment that was downvoted 70 times got removed. I'm not sure if he did that or if someone else did it, but it's the internet, so it's not too difficult to find these things. So in response, Matt said, LOL, blocked you because you came out swinging. <sighs> Dude, Nobody got clocked and nobody came out swinging. We need to let's tone it down just a little bit, huh? All right. <clears throat> you came out swinging, calling me names, and then you came running here to cry and shit your pants because I replied. I think you called me a chimpanzee, Lamau. So take your brand new zero follower account on Twitter and stay blocked. Funny talking about stirring it up, yet here you are trying to tag me in like some flex because you got blocked, making weird dick jokes about me like you were a teenager was the name calling the criticism you're referring to or was it the dick joke and then professional ad says i never thought i'd see something like this from a big game developer which is kind of the point i'm trying to make here so again just see that even if this feels justified it does not reflect positively on you or tcm you're a smart guy, so I know you know that. Now, let's get back to the point of foresight. There is something horribly wrong going on with QA for TCM. If this was my game and I was in charge, I would have had to have a serious discussion with the QA team. How the QA team for TCM could not see all of the glaring issues with the game prior to release is astonishing unless management ignored them or there's some other outlier like focusing too hard on trying to make TCM a party game even though the game itself contradicts that in every way imaginable. Keep in mind I was getting heavy chemo in the hospital when the technical test, basically a beta, released for TCM a few months before the game came out. I doubt I managed to play over six hours of the beta while it was available so I shortened and bullet pointed some of the feedback I left for the devs after the technical test ended that I want to share with you guys now. There's no reason for victims to respect any stealth mechanic in the game. Some characters have game breaking powers. Door stuns are going to be a problem. The grandpa cutscene interrupts gameplay, which is very annoying. If the survivors don't fear the family, the game will turn into a competitive slug instead of a horror game. This is an issue they can't fix though because of the 3v4 formula. Family has no way to communicate outside of voice comms. The maps are beautiful, but they are frustrating to navigate. 
Patrolling objectives will become the only viable gameplay for family. Using escape wells does not seem like it has any downsides. The iframes and infinites are very problematic, which is something they did slightly turn down for launch, but it's still there. There's a lot more in the letter with a lot more detail. I did not just send them bullet points, but I just want to share one last paragraph with you. I know there's still a lot of unknown factors to come in the full release like Julie, Sissy, Johnny, attributes, perks, skill trees, etc. And that's a fair point, but in my 20 plus years of gaming experience, these things only exacerbate core issues rather than fixing them. They also lead to cringe metas where skill doesn't matter. So without even knowing what was going to be in the meta game, my fears about turning what was already a difficult game to balance into pretty much a completely unmanageable nightmare turned out to be 100% true. Again, keep in mind, all of that feedback was provided from a hospital bed back in May after about only six hours of gameplay with a foggy chemo brain. If anyone in that situation can outperform your QA team to that degree, there's a serious problem with standards going on that definitely needs addressed internally. Now, that part was a little harsh, but hopefully the devs can try to be open-minded about videos like this and other constructive criticism because it's coming from the mutual place of wanting TCM to succeed and be the best game possible in the admittedly very limited 3v4 format. I know the majority of the TCM community are pretty annoyed with the game right now, and a lot of them are losing hope that the game is going to have a future. However, for the people still playing and enjoying the game, that's awesome, I am too, but you need to stop with the endless defense of the game because you are unironically contributing to its murder. Like I said at the beginning, we gave the devs a fair shot at supporting the game post-launch and now it's time for some tough love. TCM has massive issues, but most players don't recognize or even care about why they're not enjoying a video game. They only care whether or not they're having fun or if they would rather be playing something else. So you have to let people criticize TCM on their behalf and stop blaming players for dodging lobbies, criticizing balance, design, monetization, and other real issues that are clearly having an impact on the future of the game. Otherwise, you will be defending it until you are literally the last one playing it. These problems are way deeper than a skill issue or a family versus victim brain rot argument. The entire notion that TZM's problems are caused by the community is stupid. I hear this repeated all the time and it's never really true. The community of any game is a reflection of that game's design. If you put a golden gun in a game and everyone uses it because it one shots, you cannot blame players for always using the golden gun. Players will always take advantage of every little thing that developers allow them to. So you cannot hate the player, you have to hate the game. That said, you can still cringe at players who use the golden gun and pretend it takes any skill. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry. Where the fuck that name is? You suck, bitch. I really do hope that TCM can make a comeback. I know new games can take a while to get off the ground and build a strong foundation, but the TCM devs are 100% guilty of making poor choices, some of which were incredibly avoidable. It has a massive identity crisis that's not easy to fix between being a casual horror sim and a competitive 3v4 game. Regardless, I still think there's a gem of a game hidden under all of the problems. You can really feel how much passion the devs had making TCM. You could tell they had the time of their life developing the game. But that transition from creating the game to managing it seems to have lost that same passion which is totally understandable. Managing a live service game for players, most of which you will never truly be able to satisfy is daunting work. Just keep in mind that the majority of players only complain and criticize because they care about the game you made. Overall, I hope this video is helpful. I could have sat here and talked for 20 minutes about everything I love about TCM, but that's not what is important right now. Either way, I'll keep feisting for as long as I'm passionate about the game and want to see it succeed. If you want my proposed solution to all of this, it would be to completely remove or gut the metagame, explore the possibility of increasing the amount of victims in a match, and pouring all available resources into making it work as a casual horror party game. But if you're still awake after all of that, I want to know how you all feel about the current state of TCM. Is it too late for a comeback? Let me know what you think. Also, if you want more TCM content, you can click the link at the end of the video. Also, leave a like if you enjoyed. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.